Hi, gorgeous. This is episode number 96 with the amazing Cindy Ertman. Hi, this is Cindy Ertman. You are listening to Heart Sales Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. I am so excited to have Cindy Ertman on the show today. So before we dive in, make sure you hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and you find the podcast tab and sign up for the empowerment notes. These are my notes getting into your inbox once a week with empowering messages and also with all the updates on Heart Sales Podcast. Today, I want to thank the listeners in LA, California, USA, and also the listeners from China. Believe it or not, Heart Sales Podcast is already listened to in over 30 countries all over the globe. And I'm so happy and grateful that you are here. So let's dive into this amazing episode with Cindy Erdman. And Cindy is the CEO and founder of The Defining Difference and The Mortgage Master Pro, success-based coaching and training companies devoted to helping people master the power of intentional choice to create a defining difference in their own lives. After being acknowledged as one of the top 100 most influential mortgage executives in America by Mortgage Executive Magazine for five years in a row and being named in the top 100 mortgage loan originators in the U.S., by Mortgage Originator Magazine for more than a decade, Cindy has now dedicated her life to empowering the growth of others. And I'm so super excited to have her on Heart Sales Podcast today because we are going to go deep how you can set these intentions and also how you can basically be the defining difference. Well, Cindy, I am so excited to have you on Heart Sales Podcast today. Welcome. Thanks so much. It's so good to be here with you, Christine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited too because you have so much going on. I mean, your level of success is really amazing and wonderful to watch. And we're going to go deeper today of how you achieve these levels of success and, you know, maybe some challenges but um, yeah, you just had a documentary coming out a while ago called The Evolution of Success, sharing your story together with amazing names like Jack Canfield, Joey Vitale, Natalie Ledville, Sonia Ricordi. So all names that are very known in the industry for self-development. Can you let us know like what what made you do the movie and share a little bit of the success path that it took to get there? Well, life's funny. You know, when we set our intention and several years ago, I was at an Oprah Winfrey conference and I set my intention about using film and television to get my message out to a larger audience. I had no idea how I was going to do that. And honestly, Christine, I didn't even do anything physically to create that. I just set the intention for that to occur in my life and for it to sort of be drawn to me, if you will. And so much to my surprise, um, a few weeks later, after I went to that conference, I actually got a call from a television producer and ultimately became a co-host of Wake Up TV, which just ran one season, but it was conscious television for women. And so that sort of set on this path and I, in 2009, I did a year-long training session with Jack Canfield um, called Train the Trainer with 100 trainers from around the world. And now many years later, um, I'm in his Transformational Leadership Council, TLC, with amazing transformational leaders from around the world. So, you know, just it's been about developing relationships for me. And so in developing relationships, ultimately got led to Matthew Toman, who's out of Dublin. Actually, he's our uh, director for the movie, The Evolution of Success. And the thing that I love about this film, he did such a beautiful job producing it, is it really isn't so much about people's success as the evolutionary journey as to how they got there. Mm -hmm. Because we know that, you know, it's great to get this level of success, but how many times do we get knocked down along the way that sometimes we think we really can't get up? 
you know, and it's about what steps do we take? How do we respond to the events of our life when really horrible, tragic, difficult things happen in our life and our business? And so it's really interviewing these transformational leaders on their journey. And uh, it's a very inspirational story. You did a beautiful job with the cinematography. And um, I think people will get a lot of value out of this movie. I think it could really help give people um, hope and faith that it's possible to get out of their current challenge if they're in one. Yeah, yeah. And you're all about, you know, helping others to be empowered and to grow. And um, yeah, it's, I, I see when I see your, your bio and, and what you've done, it's so beautiful. And I just love that because it comes so from the heart. And you, you have been through a lot. So when people are <laughs> listening right now, I just want them to know that wherever they are in their life, there is the opportunity to turn things around. Yeah, right? with that question. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, it's like I, you know, I come from a very long background in the mortgage industry and the finance industry um, and, you know, ran a major company for many years, um, hired hundreds of people, built a region for a national mortgage bank in uh, California. And it's, you know, it has had a lot of trials and tribulations al along the way. And for me personally, when 2007, when the sort of financial crisis hit, Here in America, it was a really big deal. And, you know, it, it, we couldn't make payroll. Um, every day we would come to work and I, I just wanted to stay in bed and pull the covers over my head, you know. And the thing is, we had no idea how long that crisis would last. So when suddenly you're, you go from making this huge income to making no money and you can't pay your people and you have no idea if you're going to be able to get to the other side of it. And everyone around me was losing homes and cars and filing bankruptcy and their lives just turned upside down and you know thousands and thousands of people were getting laid off from their jobs at a moment's notice you know it was really a great financial tragedy for so many people and so you know it was sort of was my own evolutionary journey at that moment of how do I get up and take a step every day um, and I speak to that in the movie. It's like, how do you get, how do you get through and keep going? And when you've got a company to lead and inspire others and help other people feel safe and yet prepare for the worst, you know? So um, I, it was my own journey of how am I going to show up for these people? How do I create enough strength in myself to continue to lead a group of people that don't know if they're going to have jobs and economic security tomorrow? You know, it's a very mm -hmm. scary place to be. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. But what I just love what you said is that you were concerned about the others first. So you put the others first, which helped you also to show up and to get through that, whatever you want to call it, hole or thing. There's this thing like when you walk through hell, keep walking. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you you did a great job doing that and and supporting others on the way and I think that's so amazing because you know you could have just given up that would have also been an option but believe me nice. but we thought about it you know and you yeah. really do think about it because you have to weigh all the options and and you know sometimes you stay in it too long so it's really But, you know, I think one of the things that was really beautiful between my partner and I is, you know, in building our company over the years, we really created a family, you know, mm -hmm. and so it was, it was, we were always about building, we were in it together. And, um, you know, I think we really did run a heart centered business. And so I think when you go through tragedy and you go through it and you feel like family, you help each other get to the other side. And there are still many, many people here um, today that didn't, didn't get paid, some, some of them for months, and yet they're still here today. So it's a very big tribute to them as well. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's when you're really in it for the long run, when you really want to make the world a better place. That is when people stick with you and with your message and support you because they see to what they can contribute. Right. And it does, it does right. make a difference, right? I know so many people... Well, not, not really anymore at present, but I knew a lot of people that hated their jobs. <laughs> and that A lot of people do, and it's sad because even, you know, I'm, I'm now a coach and a trainer, and I launched my coaching company five years ago, 
And I think one of the things that so many people say to me on the first call is they just don't know if I want to do this anymore. You know, there's so many people that, you know, need to make their paycheck or need to make a living, but they're just not fulfilled in their life, you know, by the work that they do. And I know it's really easy to say, lean into your passion, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. A lot of people don't even know what their passion is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what I've learned for me, and it was a big, big catalyst for me, Five years ago, I was running a branch with 65 people and a region with 20 branches and had the top producing sales team and in the branch. And it was great and raising three children and all that. And I could have done it forever and made a lot of money. But I, I had been in my life in a place where I'd been very, very passionate about my business. And I would go home at night and I could do the job really well. And I loved leading people. But I realized one day that I didn't feel that spark anymore. Um, and I had to really ask myself, am I going to continue to do this for the money? Um, and I did for a while, but I realized, you know, and I, when I'm working with my coaching clients, I always start with the end in mind. I like to take them to their 90 year old self and have them look back on their life, you know, give perspective to go, you know, we got to make every day count because you know, they're limited. So mm-hmm. I want to be able, I just made, you know, a decision that I wanted to show up and playful out of my own life. So I made a very, very scary and tough decision, but I just, this little voice in my head, and I really encourage people to listen to that little intuitive voice in their head, because it's such a powerful voice that our intellect drowns out, you know, 90% of the time, but I've learned to trust that voice. And that voice said to me, it's time, because if not now, when? question mark. And I would envision me being at the end of my life, you know, laying in that hospital bed and not making the choice to act on my passion, which I trademarked the name, The Defining Difference in 2004. So I, 10 years, I knew I wanted to develop my coaching and training company. And I'd been a coach and a teacher and a trainer for 17 years within my organization and nationally, but I never under my own brand. And I just decided that if not now, when? And um, I wrote a blog called In the Hallway of Uncertainty, and I leapt into uncertainty in a very big way. Um, and on the other side of that uncertainty, I live my passion again. So it's a, it's a pretty magnificent thing when we can leap into that fear and the unknown and trust that, and have faith that we will find the path, even though we may not see the steps in front of us, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's why so many people get stuck. Yes. Because they think they have to have this master plan that leads them from A to B to C, and then D is a big success or whatever they're dreaming of. And it's life doesn't work this way. That's what I found. Like starting to follow my heart and listening to that little voice made all the difference. But I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know where. It's one step at a time. Well, it is. And I'm, you know, I'm a recovering perfectionist for sure. And I remember many years ago, I was developing my website for the defining difference and I was starting to map out my plan, but I, I just kept, it wasn't done, you know, and I, it just, I was in development for a very long time, you know, trying to have it all mapped out and know what the next steps were. And I was at a training, I've never forgotten it. And she drew a, she had a big sticky on the wall and she drew a stick figure. And she showed the stick figure, and then she showed a line that went over to this X, which was the thing I was trying to create, meaning my new business. And she said, Cindy, you're in development, 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 development. And then she drew a straight line, and she said, just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be done. If your site's not done, put coming soon. And that visual helped me make the decision to just launch, even though it wasn't 100% ready even though I wasn't sure exactly what the clear path was, even though I wasn't sure what the next step was. And that was some of the best advice I was ever given. And I acted on it. Yeah. Now that's the important portion, right? It's you get this amazing advice, but then you need to take action. Right. Yeah, exactly. So what can somebody do if they are not an action taker? Do, do I guess that right? Are you a natural action taker or is that something you had to learn? Oh, I definitely trained myself. You know, I was not this overachiever as a kid at all, like as a child. Sometimes I look back and like, I don't even know where I came from as an adult because it was not who I was growing up. You know, I was an average student. I didn't excel in school. I was okay. 
I, you know, I was a responsible student, but I was average. When I went to college, I remember my father saying, you know, don't forget you, you learn as much from your social experiences as you do from your academic ones. So I took that to heart and I had a lot of social experiences. <laughs> and so, you know, I was never this overachiever. Um, I really, I graduated with a communications degree from college and felt semi-qualified to do everything and not qualified to do anything. And I had really no idea how my path would unfold and um, started in, in real estate and ultimately switched to the mortgage industry and then started doing a lot of leadership training and teaching and, and uh, working with, in the last few years, high-level executives and, and high-performance um, executives and leaders. And that's sort of become my passion because I find so many high-level executive leaders, they make money, but they're um, not necessarily fulfilled you know, in their life. And so it's a matter of sort of redefining success and helping people kind of rewrite their story so they find that that passion again. But regarding action, you know, I think the, the thing is people sometimes don't know what action to take, right? So you've got to have a plan. And that's what I help people do is to create a plan because I think some people don't know what to do. You know, I always suggest that people focus on, you know, an hour time block a day of, and do five income generating activities or five relationship generating activities each and every day so that if the world is coming at you and you just have no time, which is what people are always in overwhelm and there's just too much on their plate and they're not sure what steps to take is let's define what is an income generating activity for you and condense it to one hour and you really commit to do that before the hour of noon so that you're really working every single day towards building and growing and expanding your business in a meaningful way. And it, it can be baby steps, but taking those steps, because when you go home at the end of the day, there's a much greater level of fulfillment when you know you've taken real actual steps each and every day to build and grow and expand your business and maybe just create, expand your influence in your marketplace. You know, if you're trying to reach more people, what could those steps be? And then some people need accountability, which is where, you know, a coach comes in or a mentor comes in or an accountability partner that's a friend or a business associate um, to help keep you on track, to check in. And I think people need that. Sometimes they need the push, the push, you know, the kick. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. I, for myself, I found that working with coaches, mentors is some kind of a shortcut. You know, it could take me like decades to find it out. And they might have, you know, the example you just mentioned, the stick figure with the X, and then you, you have a visual that, you know, keeps you moving forward. And uh, also having accountability partners, I find very helpful because you, you do not want to show up in the next meeting not having done anything. So no, it's, the thing is, it's not, and it doesn't feel good either. You know, people yeah. know when they're not taking steps. And, you know, we, and then we're our own worst enemies, right? You know, the negative self chatter that we give ourselves all day long when we're not taking action. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a team around me now and, and my team manages my calendar. I've learned to give up a lot of things so that my day is managed much more effectively and they do a much better job of managing my calendar than I do. And so my day is very full and very productive and very structured. And I have a team that, that helps keep me accountable. And I use them as a filter because I get asked to do so many speaking engagements and interviews and all these wonderful things come, but I can't do everything. So I use them as a filter too, to, to make sure that what I'm, what I'm saying yes to is aligned with my own value system. That's really important to me too. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. So if somebody's listening out, things like, well, great, income generating activities, huh? Well, would that be restructuring my homepage, like, or changing the about me page? Do you have some, some advice where they could start looking besides making a sale, which seems to be pretty obvious, but w what are other activities that help towards that goal to have a bigger impact and a better business? Well, it's a really good question because people do ask me when I'm training around, you know, focus on five income generating activities each day or, or I will say relational activities because sometimes it's about who we need to meet. I mean, obviously you're, if you're in sales, it's, it's about touching more customers and reaching more people obviously and creating a stronger value proposition so that they want to say yes to what it is that you're selling. 
Um, I think it's all of the above. I think working on websites is great. I think sometimes um, I don't see websites sometimes as an income generating activity, even though we know we need to have a presence. And I know for me, I'm in the middle of revamping my whole website right now because it's too much. It's too busy. And in today's world, um, you know, you want your site to load within about three seconds or Google doesn't really recognize it. So there are things that we need to do to but I think sometimes we make it too complicated. The best thing we can do is just be simple. Start with something very, very, very simple and don't overthink it because as we know, websites are this constant evolution. So having a simple presence certainly is better than no presence. But I think you know one of the things I do in coaching is I help people really discover their why and greatest strength. So I always say, you know, start with what is your three greatest strengths? You know, in the context of the people you serve, so, you know, some people will say, well, I'm a great communicator. It's like, okay, well, that's awesome. But how does that benefit the people that you serve? And so just asking yourself the question of what are your three greatest strengths and what are the three greatest strengths of your company or who it is that you serve or the, the service you provide or the product you provide um, or the, the company you work for, if you're working for somebody else, you know, what are the three greatest strengths of your company in the context of the people that you serve and getting clarity on that helps you really discover what your real value is. And I always say, if you want to make more money, you've got to create more value. And some of these people just aren't even clear on the value that they currently have. So I think getting really clear on the value that you provide and how does that really serve them? Because, you know, Creating a, a stronger business is really about focusing on them, not on us. You know, websites need to be about your customers. They need to be about the pain points that you're solving for your customer. What, what is it that your service provides that solves a problem and creates a solution for the people that you serve? So I think from that perspective, a website is really important. But, you know, who are you trying to reach? You know, I'm trying to expand and scale my business right now. And one of the things that's challenging about that is how do you scale a business and yet maintain the level of value and connection that I have with my clients now? And I'm, I'm struggling with that personally and trying to create some solutions where I don't lose the intimate connection that I have with my, with my clients because it's such a big part of the success of my business. So for me, it's about maybe reaching out to corporations and so income generating activities for me or who do i need to reach out to that can be a potential customer who who would benefit from my value who needs to go on my list of contacts um so a lot of times it's about who do we need to reach out to who do we need to make that cold call to if you will um who do we need to know who do you know you know christine that you could introduce me to who do i know that i could help you reach a larger audience. So using your network, you know, our networks are very powerful and we very seldom tap in to the people right around us to say, who do you know? What two people do you know, Christine, that you could introduce me to that might benefit from my services and vice versa? You know, collaboration with other amazing people, we don't do very often. And yet it's a really powerful tool. It's how I ended up here, collaborating with other great leaders. Awesome. Yeah, it's a very powerful tool. And and I see that so often, especially like when people are starting out or they're still a solopreneur or have like a one or two person team that they're so focused on their own little world and bubble that it doesn't even come to mind that a strategic partnership or, you know, doing a program with somebody together or whatever could really help them to accelerate and to give more value to people that actually need it. The yeah. other thing too, I'll mention just briefly because it's been impactful in my own business when I launched my coaching and training company is the beauty with social media, the beauty with particularly Facebook is there's all these groups established and you can join, you know, so many groups that are already established in, in the realm of what it is that you teach, train, service, provide. And so, you know, being a coach in the mortgage and financial industry and now to executive leaders, I put myself into groups and then began to provide value, drop in, you know, comment, share other ideas. And pretty soon people start paying attention to you in that group and communicating with you. And I've developed some amazing relationships off of Facebook and in some of these specialized groups and actually gotten a lot of clients from 
that interaction and that interaction is free. So when we're starting out and building businesses and don't have a lot of capital and resources, it's a great resource and getting a little more intentional about who we connect with. I always tell people, pick your 20 best potential referral sources and friend request them on Facebook and begin to interact, not just like them, but begin to interact. And I've done that a lot. And then after a month or two, when I feel like I've had a little bit of a connection, then I'll pick up the phone because now it's a warm call. It's not a cold call, but it's an easy way to begin to expand our influence in our fields of expertise. Yeah. And it's a, it's a beautiful way to really connect to not be on the surface level, but to, to have the opportunity to go deeper because then we can provide even more value. And, and what I really love, I mean, we connected that way. We had a conversation first to, to really get to know each other better. And I love that you bring so much value to the table. So even for our listeners, you have this wonderful gift that you usually charge for, and <laughs> we have the opportunity to get it for free. It's a seven instant skills. Let us know what it is about and where people can find it. And then, yeah, time flies. <laughs> so. I'll show it to you here. This is what you'll actually receive. It's actually a 22 page ebook um, that I created in the last couple of years. And it's seven instant skills to ignite your life, business, and income. Because people were always asking me, well, how did you how did you get to this level of success in your life? And you know, what does success mean to you? And so I started putting pen to paper about some of the practices that I've actually utilized and continue to utilize in my own life. And so it's really just seven different steps, if you will, skills, like from my morning ritual. Do you have a morning ritual? But I'm such a big believer that what we put into our brain and into our head every day, you know, it can either fuel us, it can inspire us or expire us, right? So we've got to be intentional if we want to really be, begin to build and grow our business. So one is secrets to wake up your day and just some of the success things that I actually do. I do start my day with 15 minutes of meditation and I work with a lot of high level leaders that are like, I can't meditate. I've got monkey brain and everybody can meditate, but it's like a practice. It's a muscle. So I start people out with two minute meditations and we grow from there and I do 15 minutes every single day and it definitely sets the tone and the grounding for my day. Um, one of the, the skills is mastering your mindset because mindset and attitude is everything from my perspective. Oh, it's, where it all, it's where it all begins. So giving people some really solid suggestions as to how to maybe shift that mindset around, you know, what stories are you telling yourself that just aren't true? Um, yeah. Sometimes we need to reframe the stories in our head to take us to that next level, because if we don't believe we can be successful, how is anyone else going to believe it? You know, so we've got to adopt our own powerful mindset. The power of five, which is focusing on the five income generating activities each day, getting focused about how we manage our day and blocking out a little bit of time to build and grow our business each and every day, leveling up your relationships, getting very intentional about who you allow into your life, who's depleting you relationally, who do you maybe need to spend less time with. So sometimes it's not always about piling more things on. Sometimes it's about letting go of certain things that are no longer serving us so that we can focus on what matters most. Um, trusting your instinct and intuition and how to do that, because that is a skill like anything else. So getting more intentional about um, really listening to that voice instead of second guessing it and maybe trusting it and leaning into to what it's guiding you to do. Powerful ways to take care of you because you know, we're, we usually put ourselves last when we're building and growing a business. You know, we don't take care of ourselves and without health, we have nothing. So yeah. I think really doing intentional practices each and every day um, and certainly each and every week that really fuel us and fill us up so that we can serve more people in an effective way. And then just helping people really get intentional about eat, making each day count to show up and playful out in your own life and some ways to take responsibility and accountability. And at the end of the day, you're, being your own defining difference was it's a choice. It's a choice to make a new choice. You know, and I believe we all have the ability to rewrite our own story, even in a small way. But it's about if you're not happy, if you're not fulfilled anymore in your life, then I want to help people take steps, you know, and sometimes they're baby steps. And then 
pretty soon there's another baby step and, and then all of a sudden this new world unfolds before you and the glass ceiling breaks above your head and you're like, oh my gosh, this possibility and opportunity has been there all along, but I've been living small and in my little box and now I'm, you know, and it's pretty cool because for me that ceiling's gone and nothing stops me now, you know, this fear is no longer holds me down because my vision is greater than my fear, so my you know fear now takes a back seat, and it's a pretty cool place to be. But I wasn't always that way, so yeah. And I love to dive into all of this with our second interview because we're having a second interview, and <laughs> I excited about this because there there are so many golden nuggets. So I'm happy that we're not putting it all in one that people can actually re-listen and take those baby steps to really digest all the wonderful things you just shared. Yeah, so I definitely link that into the show notes and obviously all the links that lead to you so people can connect with you on social media, reach out, have the conversation. Thank you so, so much, Cindy, for giving us this input today and the beautiful work you do in the world. Well, thank you, Christine, for having me. Absolute pleasure to be with you and your audience. And they can definitely get this download at seveninstantskills.com. And I absolutely would love to do a second interview with you. And thank awesome. you so much for having me. You're awesome. What a wonderful and inspirational episode with Cindy Erdman. I just loved our conversation and I love how you can find the defining difference. And also for me, how can you be the defining difference maybe in other people's lives? And by setting intention, you actually create your own magic. I have found that true for me. The more intentions I set, the more I stay on that path to go for my dreams, to stop just dreaming and act now, the more amazing things are coming to me, the more I can create. And I think the examples Cindy shared are just amazing. The way to go about it is pretty clear. I just want to make sure you hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab, take Cindy's episode, and there you have the transcript, the show notes, the key points, and also all the links to connect with her on social. It's just one click away. And what I really, really love is her wonderful free gift, which actually gives you the opportunity to dive in deeper. So that will be available for you in the resource tab. So hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and find the podcast tab. And there's everything you need to know. And again, thank you so much for listening. I am so happy and proud we are going to approach episode 100 next week. And I just want to thank you for being here, for the encouragement, for your ratings and review on iTunes and Stitcher, as well for the emails that are reaching me. So without you, this podcast would basically not exist because then I would just be talking by myself with a couple guests. And that's all exciting because we know we can serve you to really create a business and lifestyle you desire and for you to become that defining difference. Wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world and bye for now.